The search for clues leads Detective Hazelwood to Peggy's home. Peggy lived alone in a more rural area on a little two-lane country road. Her car was not there, and it didn't appear anyone was home. Detectives discovered that Peggy's bed had not been slept in. Her purse was missing. And they found Peggy's dancing shoes. When Detective Hazelwood and his team enter the kitchen of Peggy's tidy home, they notice something that seems odd. In the kitchen, we discovered that there was two bowls uh, sitting on the table with spoons. My father noticed both bowls had some sort of sticky residue. That was probably ice cream. The dirty dishes left on the table seem out of place to the detectives and raise suspicions. It suggests Peggy might have had company before she vanished. The first question you have to ask yourself is, is there an unknown suspect that is involved? Friends and family start passing around uh, missing person flyers for Miss King. The local newspaper has got involved trying to uh, get the news out there that we were looking for Miss King. The publicity pays off. On February 10th, a week after Peggy disappeared, police receive a call from someone claiming to have seen Peggy's car, which was described in the news stories. The investigators followed up and were able to determine that, yes, that was Miss King's uh, vehicle. The location where the car was found is not near Peggy's home or where she worked. It was on the other side of the river. We started to lose hope that Peggy would be found alive. When Peggy's car is towed to the state police crime lab for processing, forensic techs quickly discover something that adds to those fears. They observe some blood stains that was on the seat and the door. It kind of puts the investigation in overdrive. Knowing Peggy King is missing, the medical examiner compares dental records and confirms the victim is Peggy. The cause of death was a 22 caliber bullet to her neck. This was a great loss. The dance group was family. It really was almost an assault on all of us to have a body of someone that we knew buried so close to us, almost right in our backyard. After we found out that she was murdered, it just took the wind out of the local dance group. She was such an integral part of it that it just wouldn't be the same. And in a month, we disbanded. That was a very upsetting time. My father was Detective Jack Hazelwood, and he worked for the police department in Frankfort, Kentucky. My childhood was not a very normal childhood. It was one in which there was a lot of crime. Sometimes I would wake up in the backseat of his cruiser. He took me to court with him sometimes. I would sit in the judge's chambers. When I was 10, the Peggy King murder case was a big deal in the town. So Peggy King is a big part of my childhood. My father didn't bring a lot of the evidence home, but I do remember pictures from this case. Laying them out on the kitchen table. The thing they say on TV is that there are no coincidences in a murder case, but it, it makes a lot of sense that that's sort of true in real life. So lots of the little pieces of the case started to come together, and my father had to figure out who buried Peggy King in the woods off of Glens Creek Road. Peggy King went missing February 4th, 1992. People thought there must be foul play from the get-go. 
Peggy was too responsible to just disappear. On February 11th, police detectives received information from uh, Peggy King's financial advisors that they had been contacted by Peggy regarding some cold calls that she had received and a $50,000 building renovation investment opportunity that to them seemed like it was a scam. Peggy King had a lot of money for the 1990s and for Kentucky. So detectives naturally turned their um, attention to these calls. The investment advisors said that someone was trying to, to sell Peggy something. And the question is, is this some sort of grift, some sort of con? The detectives looked into it to see maybe if they could determine how the calls were coming in, check phone records, just confirm who was trying to scam Miss King. She had come into a large inheritance from the sale of some property. Could this have had something to do with her disappearance? That's always the question. Someone could have wanted to get that money, even if it took killing Miss King in order to do it. Peggy King was a librarian in the Frankfort, Kentucky State Capitol building. She was well known in the community. She was also a member of a local square dancing group. I joined an American folk dancing group that Peggy was a part of. The group met every week. It was largely contra dancing, where you dance with a partner, you progress up a line of uh, various dance calls. You might have seen it in a Jane Austen movie where you get a line of people and they pose together and then pull apart. It's very easy to kind of just lose yourself with the music and the dance rhythm. I got to know Peggy King through the local folk dance community. The longer you dance, the more you learn, and Peggy was definitely a good dancer because she smiled all the time when he danced with her. We had a dance class in February, and it was almost immediate the next day that Peggy is nowhere to be found. There didn't seem to be any answer as to where she could be. Maybe one day people didn't pay much attention, the second day, third day, a week, then something's really wrong. The dance group was everything to Peggy. After she disappeared, we found out that she was murdered. I was at that dance, her last dance. The dance group was a different experience after Peggy's death. You'd leave at the end of the dance at 9 o'clock at night. It would be dark, and you had a different feeling you'd start to look around and think, who's out there? <laughs>